Alright, I've finished watching the entirety of the first season of the Fallout TV show, and like anyone else who's probably watched the whole thing to the end, I want to talk about it. In this video, I'll be going over my thoughts of the series, what I liked and disliked, and what I believe this will mean for the Fallout universe. And also, apologies for the lazy generic gameplay footage for this video. I always do try and match the video to the audio in every single video I do, but every video I've done using footage from the Fallout TV show or the trailer has had a notification that copyright material was used, even when I declared it and didn't attempt to do any monetization. It's technically fine, but it also kind of makes me feel like there's a giant foot above my head ready to squash me, so this will be more of a listen than a watch video. Before you go any further in this video, please note the spoilers up ahead. I'll be talking about everything that happens into the last episode, so if you haven't watched it yet, now's the time to skedaddle. I'm just allowing it for those people to click on a new video, and they're probably gone. Okay, wow. That was a bit of a journey. I've got quite a lot of mixed emotions about how the series panned out, to be honest. I'll try to keep some form of structure to this video, but having vault -Tec be the ones to have actually started the Great War was a plot point I truly did not expect. It's a theory that had been alluded to before in-game and by fellow Fallout YouTubers for quite some time, but I legitimately was surprised they actually did canonise that fact as being possible. It doesn't completely retcon anything from the past centuries to the series. vault -Tec were always described as evil, and I guess we also don't know 100% if it was in fact them, purely because I don't know if Cooper Howard's wife would have planned it on that date, given that her daughter was out and about and not safe in a vault, and could have died in the blast. But it seems odd that neither the US or China were the ones to, to actually start the Great War, potentially. Anyway, for what I liked, as a show on its own, it's pretty good. Was it perfect? No, of course not, but perfection is very difficult to achieve. I fully agree with Jonathan Nolan when he does say that trying to please all fans is a fool's errand. But was it way better than I thought it would be? Definitely. I was very happy to have been proven wrong on the doubts that I had. I liked the characters. I thought Ella Pennell did an amazing job to be specific. I'd said this in an earlier video, but her Vault Dweller character was the best vehicle for a protagonist to expose we the viewers to the wasteland. Her character Lucy was genuinely a good character. She portrayed the fish out of water look that a Vault Dweller would have super well. She was realistic, funny, had her own agency, and for lack of a better word, she was actually believable. The only thing I'd say I found a little jarring with her character was how quick she became ruthless. Like, it was only the end of the second episode she was perfectly fine soaring off Will's head and walking around with it. Again, she had just been exposed to quite a lot of bloodshed, so she maybe was just adjusting to her surroundings, but that was maybe the minor thing that I would say. Walton Goggins stole every scene he was in, and I really did enjoy the juxtaposition of his character existing between the time jumps of the pre-war and post-war eras. The pre-war era, or Fallout, is something I've been very, very interested in for such a long time, mostly because we barely get to see any of it, so it was great to literally walk around in those times. Beyond the obvious setup to the reveal that vault caused a great war, but I liked how it accurately portrayed the themes of Fallout, the pre-war hyper-nationalism, where being labelled a communist is a veritable death sentence, to the extreme late-stage capitalism, where actors no longer work for movies but for companies as products. Maximus was also an enjoyable character. Of the three, he was probably my least favourite, but it's not to say I didn't like him. I am curious with the show's ending of what it'll mean for his character. His actor Aaron Moten had explained that power is Maximus's main goal in order to make up for the weaknesses he feels in himself. When he wakes, Lucy's gone, but his star is rising within the Brotherhood of Steel, with him declared as Knight Maximus. And given that he gets a higher rank in a resurgent Brotherhood that has control over powered Los Angeles, it may even be that he gives himself over to the Order far more previously than he had. Of all the episodes, the first was probably the best, or at least my favourite, which is not to say that I thought the whole thing went downhill from there, but the anticipation and the tension of the first episode was great. From watching Cooper Howard seeing the smoke cloud from the Hollywood Hills to the Raiders removing their vault disguises and unleashing themselves on the vault, it was a romp and a riot. It might have also been that I watched the whole series in one full sitting, so I probably remembered the first episode more, but it was a really good introduction to the series. There were some weaker episodes, like the escapades in Vault 4 weren't bad necessarily as a story, and they definitely helped address some questions as to what happened to the NCR, but I did feel it was unnecessary to dedicate an entire episode and a half to that vault, considering the series was only 8 episodes long. Probably felt like the plot could have been advanced better had they moved on from there a little bit quicker. Creature designs such as the Yao Guai and the Golpa were also really really great. I felt like they had managed to translate these gross mutated monsters from the game over to the screen. 
It's understandable we only had a glimpse of a dead super mutant, considering their population would probably be diminished on the west coast. It was a shame though that we didn't get to see a deathclaw. It would have been pure fan service, but it would have been unquestionably sick. And not to diminish the entire show, but as a diehard New Vegas fan, my absolute favourite moment was when the show ended on a shot of the Mojave Wasteland, with the Lucky 38 scene in the distance. It was near the end when Maximus was talking to Moldava and they were having a conversation, and my wife had come into the lounge room to ask if I'd enjoyed the show, and I said, yes, but it's a shame there haven't been any mention of New Vegas. And she, not knowing Fallout at all, said, oh, that's not good, and left the room. And basically, straight after that, that final shot happened, and I flipped my lid. The actors in the pre-war interviews had stated that a second season wouldn't be in California, which had me hoping we might head that way, but I love that we now definitely will. Now for the parts that I disliked. I admit I have my own personal biases, and for most of these I mentioned a casual fan or a newcomer to the series probably wouldn't care. But one of them would be Shady Sands, the capital of the NCR, appears to be combined almost with the Boneyard. In game, the Boneyard is the city of the NCR located in the ruins of Los Angeles, and it's named for the bones of the pre-war residents and the ruined skyscrapers of the location. It's an integral part of the nation and hosts the Boneyard Followers University. Shady Sands was the first capital of the NCR seen in the original game, with its map location being very, very far from LA. However, in the show, it almost seems like Shady Sands was in LA or like at least a hop, skip and a jump away from it. In a previous video I'd made, my largest gripe had been on the lack of the NCR in any of the trailers. And then within about a month, a new trailer was released that showed the NCR soldiers battling the Brotherhood. I know it may not have seemed to be the case since I've made a bucket load of Caesar's Legion videos, but I genuinely love the NCR. I was glad to see them mentioned in the show, and obviously was quite bummed to see their fame. There were a lot of rumblings in Fallout New Vegas that the NCR wouldn't last forever, but I was hoping they'd remain in some form or another. Which they technically did. I won't deny that I was a little disappointed it wasn't from their own expansion or imperialism that caused their demise, but that a pre-war nerd named Hank launched a nuke at them. That said, it could be argued the NCR does still exist, just not as they once did. The Shady Sand sign listed it as the first capital of the NCR, while the HQ sign states that it's the NCR headquarters. I like to think that Moldavia's contingent were the NCR forces that remained in the area, while the rest of the nation considered the Boneyard and Shady Sands to basically just be a lost cause. The other thing I'll admit I disliked is that it's strange how the Master and his mutant forces from Fallout 1 never located any of the new vaults that we saw. The vaults we were introduced to sat pretty much right out in the open. Hell, Vault 33 was legitimately right near Santa Monica Pier and Vault 4 was pretty visible. Given the effort that the Master went to to get into other vaults, I feel like those ones would have been pretty identifiable juicy targets. And not even just for them, but also for the Enclave. Speaking of the Enclave, I can't say I was the biggest fan to see them back again. I've never really been that keen on the Enclave True, but canonically, they've had their asses handed to them twice in extremely decisive manners. There were the rumours of contingents existing in Chicago, but the group that we briefly see seems to be located far closer to California. Wilzig escapes from the facility, pursued by Enclave forces and with a bounty quickly placed on his head. We obviously don't know how much time passes between his escape and when he crosses path with Lucy in California but it can't have been too long. He was on foot and being pursued, so there'd need to be an enclave base in California, or even a neighbouring state such as Nevada, Oregon, or Arizona. And given their recent defeats, as well as the power of the NCR, and then also now the power of the Brotherhood, it seems weird that the enclave has been able to exist and survive in such a form. Not to have this whole video based on the things I disliked about the series, I legitimately did really enjoy watching it, but as a Fallout nerd who has a YouTube channel dedicated to the topic, there are some things I focus on a bit too much, and that's the retcons. The first retcon is that ghouls apparently now need a serum of some sort to keep themselves from going feral. This as a process itself isn't the worst idea in the world. The issue is that it's never been seen before in the previous 200 years of lore we have for the series, and now suddenly it seems to be the driving force of non-feral ghouls. I'd done a video previously on if all ghouls were doomed to just become feral, and with the information provided from games, it could be determined that all ghouls would technically go feral at some point, with the contributing factors being one or a combination of isolation slash antisocial behaviour, radiation exposure, or genetics. We meet multiple pre-war ghouls who have lived for 200 years who never mention the vials of serum, 
And sure, maybe we don't see them take it purely as a gameplay mechanic, but there are some perfectly sane pre-war ghouls who would never have had access to take any serum, such as Eddie Winters or Billy the Ghoul Kid. Anyway, it might just be that some ghouls require it to stay sane while others don't. And again, having an actual medicine be the reason that some ghouls don't go feral is a perfectly sound, logical idea. But it just sort of raises more questions than it answers when it's only introduced for the first time more than 200 years after the bombs fell. Mr. House appearing in the vault Tech reveal was also an amazing cameo. This might not be considered a retcon outright, but it does sort of pose questions on his goals in New Vegas based on this. In the meeting, House appears to be on board with, or at least complicit, with vault launching the nukes. And he had said that he predicted the bombs would fall and had no intention of saving the world. Merely, he wanted to protect New Vegas. So it is somewhat odd that he would be on board with bombs falling on his beloved city that he spent billions on setting up defense systems to shoot down. And if it was vault that dropped the bombs, they evidently didn't tell him, as he stated that his calculations were off which led to the events of Fallout New Vegas, since the Platinum Chip never arrived in time. I mean, maybe they thought he was a loose screw and they chose to wipe him out, but if that's the case, it's odd that Hank would go running to Daddy House at the end of the series. I don't imagine he'd be welcoming him with open arms considering he'd helped devastate Vegas, not to mention that he nuked House's largest post-war consumer base, the NCR. The biggest one I've seen, which is probably going to cause the most amount of problems between now and when the next Fallout series comes out, is the fall of Shady Sands. A chalkboard gives the timeline of the status of the NCR, with the fall of Shady Sands listed as occurring in 2277, followed by an arrow pointing to the bomb that Hank had launched against the city. The glaring problem is that in 2277, the NCR was fending off Caesar's Legion in the first Battle of Hoover Dam. A mere four years later, in 2281, the events of Fallout New Vegas take place, with no mention at all of the fall of Shady Sands. It could be argued, as before, that Shady Sands was the first capital of the NCR, and as such a new city such as the Hub is now considered the centre of power for the Republic, and as such, Shady Sands no longer held the significance it once had. Others had argued that the fall is listed in its own box in 2277, with the arrow pointing to the mushroom cloud indicating Shady Sands fell into disrepair in 2277, and then the bomb happened sometime in the 15 years between New Vegas and the TV show. However, it does still keep some questions pending. Terminal entries in New Vegas state that Shady Sands is a major distributor of the Republic's energy from Hoover Dam, which kind of seems implausible if the city had been nuked, or at minimum had been considered as having fell four years prior. No characters in New Vegas really mention Shady Sands beyond the NCR representative in Freeside, who simply asks what was the capital of the NCR, with the answer being Shady Sands. However, from the hours of dialogue, often with NCR citizens, outright discussing how bad the NCR is or how things are falling apart at home, the fall of their original capital, by nuke, or just squalor, would be a cause for discussion. As a comparison, I mean, the capital city of Australia is Canberra. No one really knows of it because it's our eighth largest city. We have far more populated, more famous cities such as Sydney or Melbourne. But if our capital city fell, I imagine quite a few of us would probably mention it. If I'm being honest, I legitimately think that this was an error by either the production or the writer's room to list the fall as occurring in 2277. Because the issue isn't that it fell. The issue is the date listed. If it had occurred in 2282, then... No one would be discussing this. I'd be perfectly on board with the whole thing. I do believe that the plan was to state that the NCR started to deteriorate after Fallout New Vegas, with Shady Sands falling apart by the atomic bomb, but the date listed was in error. That's also entirely my own speculation, or it also could be argued it's me trying to just cope with the fact that the canon entries of the series don't match with what I expected them to be. We do have confirmation that Fallout New Vegas is considered canon though, so it is something worth thinking about. Again, I didn't mean to spend this whole video talking about what I didn't like or retcons, I legitimately really did enjoy this show. From start to finish, it blew my expectations away. It's probably one of the best video game adaptations I've actually ever seen. And considering the amount that have been released in recent times, and with the relatively low budget that Fallout had, that's pretty impressive. I think the big question from here though is where we go in the Fallout series from here. The final scene obviously canonizes a New Vegas ending, which will be fascinating to see. I literally started this channel on the basis of a theory I had about why Caesar's Legion would win if the Courier had died, and a large portion of the videos I've made since have been on potential post-New Vegas outcomes, 
so to actually have one verified is really exciting. Emil Pagliarolo had also confirmed that New Vegas is considered canon, just which ending is canon is obviously something we'll be waiting to see. In the previous video I had made, I think it was slightly misinterpreted that I was outright hating on the show. But it was more so that the way the show had to be made meant that it would be more accessible to newcomers to the series rather than current fans. The show was definitely great, and I'm happy to be wrong, as I felt they straddled a really perfect medium of explaining things to be understood for newcomers while not over explaining it for those already in the know. Part of me still believes it would have been good for the show to maybe have its own standalone story in a new region such as New York or New Orleans, but that's simply my own opinion. The good part of all the TV show's success is that it brings more eyeballs to the series, and therefore hopefully more participants to the game. And this in turn might even jumpstart Bethesda's plan to release Fallout 5 in a more reasonable time frame, as there may be a whole new customer base who are incredibly keen to explore the wasteland themselves. Where the Fallout series goes from here will likely be seen in the second season of the Fallout TV show, which will probably be in the Mojave Wasteland and potentially beyond. But I am curious of what others thought. Did you enjoy the show or was it not up to scratch for you? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.